Every culture is different, every culture is unique, and you know what that means, there are things about every culture that feel strange to people who grew up elsewhere, and the wonderful Japan is no exception. These are 20 things that can't be seen anywhere but in Japan. Number 20. Gundam Robot Gundam is a Japanese military fiction media franchise, kind of like the Japanese version of Transformers with robots and animation. It's popular with science fiction and anime lovers alike, but it's no longer just science fiction or animation, it's the real deal. In 2020, engineers in Japan built a real-life mobile suit Gundam in Yokohama's Chinatown. The robot stands at 59 feet tall, which means it was made to scale and weighs an incredible 25 tons. But the robot's no standing sculpture, it actually moves. The robot has 24 moving joints, including 18 flexible knuckles on each hand. It can also walk and even levitate in the air before coming back down to the ground. The robot was on display in late 2020 at the Gundam factory, and fans were able to enter an elevator to check out the robot from every angle. So who on earth would make a life-sized robot? But the robot was the brainchild of Mr. Masaki Kawahara, who was also responsible for making the life-sized Gundam in 2009 in Odaiba, Japan. After making that one, he expressed that he wanted to make one that moved but the technology of the time held him back. Over a decade later, he was finally able to achieve his goal. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the odd topic. Did you know that some sell sex dolls? Yeah, really, as you can see in the photo on the left. As for the photo on the right, you can see just a normal vending machine that only sells Coca-Cola, right? Wrong. Because while it sells Coca-Cola, the vending machine walks around delivering directly to customers. The future is here, and it's sex dolls on demand and walking robots delivering Coca-Cola cans. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag odd topic. Number 19. Miffy. Miffy is a character you'll spot in many parts of the world at one time or another. She's a fictional robot from a book with her own YouTube and social media channels and over 10,000 toys and products sold in various countries. Although Miffy is most famous in Japan, where she comes from. The first books with Miffy were published in the early 1960s, and since then, those books have been translated into over 50 languages with tens of millions of copies sold worldwide. She might be decades old, but her popularity just continues to grow. There used to be a Miffy Metro train in China, and there's a dedicated Miffy Cafe in Japan that remains popular to this day. You don't even need to watch Japanese TV to get your fix of Miffy, since Miffy TV shows have been arriving on Cartoon Network in the USA, KRO in the Netherlands, Super RTL in Germany, Tiny Pop and ITV in the UK, ABC in Australia, NHK in Japan, and even Tooniverse and EBS in Korea. Everywhere you look, there's something Miffy related to grab your attention. Number 18. Octopus Head Massager Japan has some of the world's longest working hours, with almost one quarter of Japanese companies requiring employees to work over 80 hours of overtime. Working so many hours would undoubtedly make you feel a lot of stress and tension, but fortunately, some Japanese companies have come up with a solution in the form of an octopus head massager. Uh, fewer working hours would obviously be preferred, but at least you've got an enormous octopus with round balls to massage your head to relieve tension and pressure. These octopus massagers feature silicone ABS and steel balls in the shape of an octopus to fit snugly over the top of your head. You can use them when your head is wet or dry, and they're lightweight and portable so that you can take them with you to the office if you need to. There are also plenty of style options to choose from. Even though they're shaped like octopuses, you can buy them with alien or cat heads in pink or green colors. Many people have said this great invention has many benefits, like relaxation, relief from tension headaches, and even dandruff prevention and hair benefits. When you massage your head with the massager, you're able to unblock any trapped oil in your pores that block hair follicles. There are definitely some geniuses living in Japan. Number 17. Shaped Watermelons 
A watermelon's natural shape isn't very convenient for most people and businesses. They're hard to stack in grocery stores and can roll out of your fridge far too easily. As watermelon is an incredibly popular fruit in Japan, they decided to devise a solution and create square watermelons. The square watermelon was made in Zensuji City, Kawaga Prefecture, which isn't one of the top watermelon producers in the country. Farmers started growing their produce in square containers and removed them when they were tightly packed. However, it was by no means the success you might have anticipated. Firstly, growing them in containers meant they could sometimes be scratched, and only up to 80% of all grown watermelons could be sold. The watermelons also had to be harvested before they were mature, which meant they had no sweetness and weren't all that pleasant to eat. So why are they still growing watermelons if they're gross? Well, as ornaments. Yeah, these watermelons, which sell for about $100 or 10,000 yen, are just for looking at. And because people like looking at them, you can now also purchase heart-shaped watermelons, then even and triangles. Number 16. Ramen Noodles and Pringles you won't encounter too many people who don't love ramen noodles. They come in a range of delicious flavors, are dirt cheap to buy, and are fast and easy to cook. You can also eat them on their own or add them to other dishes. Doesn't get much more desirable than that. But Japan decided to combine two things we love, ramen noodles and Pringles potato chips. You can't help but want to cry tears of joy. These snacks were exclusive to Japan, which is devastating. But let us describe what you're in for if you ever get a chance to try them. You can purchase Pringle chips with ramen noodle flavoring or ramen noodles with Pringles flavoring. The Pringles with ramen noodle flavors were available in two versions, chicken bone soy sauce and squid fried noodles. Both came in packs of 12 and were available in Japan for a limited time only. You are also able to purchase Pringles ramen noodles in sour cream and onion and jalapeno and onion, both of which would have flowed off the shelves. A taste sensation, am I right? Number 15. Japanese Coffee Vending Machines if you didn't already know, vending machines are a big deal in Japan. If you can think of anything that doesn't belong in a vending machine, you can almost guarantee that you'll find it in one in Japan. They have so many different options that statistically, there's about one vending machine for every 30 people in Japan. I guess one of the more normal things you can find in a vending machine in Japan is coffee. Coffee arrived in Japan in 1877 and it was a huge hit. People loved visiting their local coffee shops and starting their day on the right foot. But when vending machines arrived, that was one thing that was a bit challenging to offer for sale within them. So what do you think motivated canned coffee to become a thing? Vending machines. Japan invented the first canned coffee called Mira Coffee, which first hit the market in Shimane in 1965. However, the company struck financial difficulties, and the product was pulled from the market just three years later. In 1969, canned coffee with milk was made available, and the market has gone from strength to strength since then. Today, you can purchase both hot and cold canned coffees from vending machines in Japan, and canned coffee is available in many countries. Number 14. An Anti-Loneliness Café Many people worry about dining alone. Cafes and restaurants tend to be quite social environments, and it's only natural to feel a bit uncomfortable when you're sitting alone at a table surrounded by people dining together. Many Japanese establishments have already tried to cater to solo people as best as they can, such as with hot pot and Korean barbecue meals for one, and even solo karaoke singing booths. But the Moomin Cafe in Tokyo has taken it one step further. When you visit this cafe for a drink or a bite to eat, you can be seated at a table with a Moomin. which is a large hippo-like character created by Tove Janssen, an illustrator and writer from Finland. The cafe has been dubbed the Anti-Loneliness Cafe, and workers take the movements to each table so that individuals, and even groups, can sit with them. While weekday mornings are generally pretty quiet in this cafe, you'll notice that weekends are packed from open to close, with many people wanting to dine with a moomin to not feel so alone. And loneliness is truly a big deal in Japan, possibly contributing to their high suicide rates. They have the seventh highest suicide rate in the world. Number 13. KFC as a Christmas Tradition if you picture a traditional Christmas dinner in the United States, you might imagine a table laden with turkey, mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce, gravy, and pumpkin pie for dessert. The average Christmas dinner table in Japan looks a bit different. You might just see a few KFC meals instead. Christmas isn't really a huge deal in Japan, especially since less than 1% of the population identifies as Christian. In the 1970s, when KFC started to take off in the country, KFC launched a Kentucky for Christmas campaign involving party buckets and festive-themed KFC meals. The campaign 
campaign and subsequent ads that followed almost made it seem like KFC was a traditional Christmas meal option in the USA, even though it wasn't. But many Japanese people didn't care, and they started lining up in their droves to serve crispy golden chicken as their main Christmas dinner. Even though decades have now passed, the idea that KFC equals Christmas hasn't changed. In 2018, KFC Japan earned about $63 million in the five days leading up to Christmas, and lines start forming out the door from around the 23rd each year. The busiest day of the year is Christmas Eve, when most KFC restaurants sell up to 10 times more chicken than they do on any other day. Number 12. Itoya Stationery Store there are very few stores in the United States dedicated to one thing. Even grocery stores sell a wide range of products rather than just food to feed your family. But the Itoya store in Japan was different. This business, founded by Katsutaru Ito in 1904, was dedicated entirely to stationery. Katsutaru noticed that stationery products were just starting to arrive in Japan, and he wanted to introduce as many people as possible to the wide variety of options available. Today, there are many large-scale Itoya stationery stores selling a wide range of gift and writing products products to suit hobbyists and professionals alike. You can choose from thousands of different stationary items, and you can easily spend hours browsing pens alone to find the one you like. And because you can spend so much time in store, Itoya owners wanted to make sure you were comfortable while you did so. The flagship store in Ginza has a business lounge, hall for events, an indoor vegetable farm, juice bar, and cafe and restaurant. So while you got your eye on that special colored paper and pen, you can be quenching your thirst and satisfying your hunger at the same time. Number 11. Kit Kats most countries have pretty standard Kit Kat options. Sure, alongside milk chocolate, you might be treated to a limited edition flavor like white chocolate, chocolate hazelnut, or even strawberry and dark chocolate, but there aren't too many weird and wonderful options. But that doesn't mean they don't exist. Japan has just decided to keep them all to themselves. They have six regular flavors they make available year-round, including chocolate, dark chocolate, raspberry, green tea, strong green tea, and roasted green tea. However, they've also introduced seasonal flavors, such as Sakura when it's Sakura season in spring and mint chocolate in summer. You might also get to try limited edition options like the Easter banana, Sakura mochi, Japanese sake, and yuzu matcha. The flavor offerings even depend on your region, since some are manufactured based on delicacies and local ingredients. You can buy purple, sweet potato flavored Kit Kats in Okinawa and Azuki bean Kit Kats in Nagoya. There are also some incredibly eccentric flavors you might find on the odd occasion, like cough drop, apple vinegar, sports drink, Drink hot Japanese chili and miso soup. I'm not saying all those flavors would be good, but I'd be curious to try them at least once. Number 10. Furikura Photo Booths Photo booths are available in many different countries, but they aren't really a huge deal, as in you're not going to find them in most locations, and there aren't lines out the door to use them. In Japan, it's a different story. Here, they are called purikura, which means print club, and you can find them at nearly any arcade. In fact, some arcades have entire floors dedicated to photo booths, which are mostly popular with young people and females. The first photo booth machines debuted in Japan in 1995, developed by game software company Atlas. Sega then started producing them, and before long, they were popping up everywhere. They became super popular in the 1990s, but technology's advanced so much since then that people still love using them and playing with all the editing software. Once you enter a photo booth, a timer starts and you can start taking photos on your own or with friends. You generally have to pose against a green screen, take your photos, and then start editing them with different stickers, backgrounds, colors, and features. Once you've finished editing your photos, you receive a card of them to take home. Most photo booths cost between 200 and 400 yen to use, which is up to about 3 US dollars. So, for most people, it's money well spent. Number 9. Rice Patty Art most Japanese people eat at least 150 grams of rice per day, which is far less than what it used to be, but that makes sense given how many other food options they now have. In saying that, it's still a staple, and it's definitely what other countries know them for. If you want to gain insight into just how highly regarded and integral rice is for Japan, you just need to pay a visit to Inokadate in Japan's Aomori Prefecture. Here, you'll get to enjoy looking at rice patty art, which has been formed out of various rice types in patty fields.
In the early 1990s, townspeople in Ina Karate were trying to come up with a way to revitalize their village and welcome visitors. Learning that their village had been growing rice for over 2,000 years, they decided to honor the history by using their paddy fields as canvases. Villagers got to work with four different heirloom and modern rice strains to create big pictures in their fields, which subsequently attracted thousands of visitors to the area. Since 2003, they've made some pretty incredible works of art, such as the Moto Lisa, Gone with the Wind, Star Wars, and even Godzilla. As you might imagine, a lot of planning goes into these pictures. Villagers meet each April to decide what to plant for the year, and farmers sketch designs on computers to work out how to plant the rice. Hundreds of people are involved in the entire process, which can sometimes involve forming agreements with landowners to create some of the larger pictures. Number 8. Foot Baths on a Train after a hard day at work, you might look forward to getting home so you can relax. But if you live in Japan, you'll likely first have to take the long journey home by train. You've already spent a long day on your feet, and now you have to stand on a train if you're not lucky enough to nab an early seat. Although, if you take the Toreyu Tsubasa train that travels between Shinjo and Fukushima, you might get to start your after-work relaxation routine before you even get home. This train has foot baths, so there's no reason why you can't soak your feet and get rid of the stresses of the day before stepping foot in your front door. The foot bath Shinkansen, as it's known, is an older E3 bullet train that's been renovated to include foot baths in the end car that you can book for 15 minutes if you're a foreign traveler or have included in your regular pass when you reserve your seat. You show up to the foot baths 10 minutes before your appointment, take off your shoes and socks, and wait for an attendant to guide you to your booked bath. You can then enjoy 15 minutes of pure luxury. This train also has a bar and lounge car with food, wine, beer, and sake. So there's certainly a lot to love if you book a spot on this train. Number 7. Okunoshima Island Okunoshima is quite a unique part of Japan. It's a small island in Japan's inland sea and forms part of Takehara in the Hiroshima prefecture. You can access it by ferry from Omishima and Taranuomi, and it's quite popular for people wanting to utilize the many walking trails, historical areas, and campsites. The island is also renowned for its rabbit population. Most of the rabbits are pretty tame, and many will even approach humans. While it's a great tourist hotspot today, that wasn't always the case. This island used to be a poison gas factory for chemical warfare fair in China during World War II. In 1925, the Imperial Japanese Army Institute of Science and Technology started a secret program involving the development of chemical weapons, and a chemical munitions plant was built there in 1926. Over six kilotons of tear gas and mustard gas were made there. Interestingly, Japan signed the 1925 Geneva Protocol, which banned chemical warfare use. However, the protocol said nothing about chemical weapon storage and development, but they clearly didn't want anyone to discover what they were doing, because they kept their plant a secret and even removed records of the island's existence from some maps. Number 6. Train Pushers the railway system in Japan is massive, and most people use it to get to and from work. And because so many people rely on it to get to work on time, it's known for its promptness. All trains must leave on time at all costs. But how do they ensure that trains leave on time? Excellent schedules and plenty of trains help, but they also hire pushers during rush hour traffic. These people are tasked with the job of pushing people onto trains to fit as many people as possible in them in the shortest amount of time. People are literally packed like sardines, and you can see proof of that when you watch trains take off with people's faces squished against the windows. Japan values its train promptness so much that if anyone were to take their own lives by jumping in front of the train, their families would be sued for cleanup fees, a loss of income, and negative publicity. Now, on the odd occasion, trains are late, and when that happens, train attendants are apologetic. If trains are late by five minutes, the attendants vow to each passenger and issue delay certificates for passengers to show to their workplaces or schools. Ultimately, it's so rare for trains to be delayed that those that are delayed often end up on the news. Number 5. Silent Karaoke the very first karaoke machine in the world was built in 1971 by Japanese musician and inventor Daisuke Noe. However, inventor Roberto del Rosario from the Philippines held the patent, and he invented the karaoke sing-along system in 1975. But regardless of whether karaoke comes from Japan or not, you can't help but be impressed by how Japanese people have managed to advance it. They've come up with silent karaoke, which allows you to sing to your heart's content at home to music without annoying your neighbors. <laughs> 
It's known as a one-person karaoke deluxe, or a Tori de Karaoke DX, and comes with the promise that you can sing with your full-sized voice. It has a clever microphone that'll muffle it enough to avoid disturbing others. The kit costs around $73 and features an audio interface unit and microphone with a cup-like device featuring foam sound insulation on the inside surface. It's also easy to set up with an AC adapter to provide power to the interface and a cord to connect to your radio, music player, or computer through the earphone jack. There's also a plug area for your earphones and a microphone. When you start singing at full volume into the microphone, it kind of sounds like you're singing with tape over your mouth. You can hear muffled words, but no defined words. When you listen to it through a wall, it's much, much quieter than if you were to sing traditional karaoke. So if you love to sing but your family really prefers that you wouldn't, this kit might be for you. Number 4. Water Saving Sink we can be quite wasteful with our water. We probably take much longer showers than we should, and how often do you turn off the tap while you're brushing your teeth? To save water and remove the need for a vanity unit in small bathrooms, Japanese inventors came up with a two-in-one toilet and sink. The idea has actually been around since the 1950s, but most of us have only learned about them in recent years. Basically, these toilets don't come with reservoir lids. Instead, they have a sink addition with a valve connecting the faucet to the toilet. When you wash your hands, the water goes into the toilet bowl for reuse during flushing rather than just going down the sink and being wasted. You can purchase 8 liter and 16 liter versions of this toilet, and they also come in a variety of colors to suit your home decor. Even if you don't need to save space in your bathroom, it would be pretty handy to have this toilet and sink combo just for its water saving abilities alone. The average family in the US wastes up to 180 gallons a week, or 9,400 gallons annually, from leaks alone. That's enough to wash about 300 loads of laundry. Nationwide, leaks in our homes contribute to about 900 billion gallons of wasted water. Number 3. Napping at Work it's hard to get a full night's sleep sometimes. If it's not the late working hours and hectic schedules that contribute to the problem, then it's the warm evenings in the summer. However, many Japanese people have mastered the art of day naps to ensure they're as well rested as possible. It's not uncommon to see people fast asleep in coffee shops, parks, bookstores, and even in their workplaces during office hours. Some people can even sleep standing up on public transport. It's so common now, in fact, that there's a word for it, inimori, which is a combination of being present and sleeping and it seems like some workplaces are embracing it. Nestle Japan opened a cafe with beds, leather chairs, and dim lighting for people to catch some shut-eye. You can even order a coffee and take a half-hour nap for just $6.90 so that you can return to work feeling refreshed. The cafe, called Suimin Cafe, is Nestle's very first permanent nap room, but there are also temporary locations popping up in many of their sites. I can think of nothing better than being able to take a nap during the working day when the fancy takes me. Number 2 blue traffic lights. Red means stop, orange means wait, green means go. Or does blue mean go? Well, it does if you're in Japan. Many hundreds of years ago, there were only four words in the Japanese language to describe the colors black, white, red, and blue. So if you wanted to describe something as green, you'd use the word for blue, which was eo. That seemed to suit most people well until the word midori started showing up in literature to describe green. Midori means sprout, and sprouts are green. But the word Eo still stuck around. It's not uncommon to see businesses selling Eo Ringo, which are blue apples, but they're green. And green bamboo is called Eo Dake, which actually means blue bamboo. So you can imagine the confusion with traffic lights. They used to be green, but the government continued to use the word Eo, which means blue, which is confusing. So the government decided to compromise. While international traffic laws mean all traffic lights must be red, orange, and green, the government decided to use the blue shade of green they could find. It's technically still green, but it looks blue, which makes the use of AO far less confusing. Number 1. Cleaning Classes most schools have cleaners. After the students have left for the day, cleaners will come in and clean up after them. In fact, that happens in many people's homes, too. Once the kids go to bed, parents will do a quick sweep of the house to make sure their toys are in their rightful places. In Japan, kids take a more hands-on approach to cleaning, and you'll be wishing we had the same practices here. In Japanese schools, students learn to take personal responsibility from an early age. 
about 15 minutes before the end of each day. All children get stuck in with brooms, vacuum cleaners, and cloths to clean their classrooms, restrooms, and all school spaces. Not only does this save the school from having to hire cleaners, but it gives the kids a chance to wind down after learning, socialize with their friends, get some exercise, and have respect for their surroundings. If they learn that they have to clean the spaces they use, they might treat them with a bit more respect and not mess them up as much. If you haven't been to Japan, it might be time to schedule a visit. I mean, who doesn't want to be able to take a nap at work or enjoy KFC for Christmas dinner? Have you been to Japan? If so, what's your favorite part about it? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!